Okay, congratulations, welcome to lesson three. If you're here now, you should be confident in knowing about eight chords. From memory, it was A major, D major, and E major, and then you had A minor, D minor, and E minor, and then we added G major and C major in lesson three. Yeah, so you should know eight chords confidently, and you should also have a strumming under your hands and be confident with that down, down, up, up, down, up strumming style. So if you've done all that, congratulations. Today we're gonna to work on some picking styles. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna work more on the left hand, the strumming hand, okay? So we're gonna do some picking styles with our fingers, very basic, simple ones. Don't panic, they're not hard. Um, we're gonna learn them with the pick and we're also gonna learn them with the fingers just to mix it up a little bit. Using the same chords that you already know, okay, to get them more confident. And what I do, I'd like to encourage you to go online. <clears throat> Google some songs, don't be shy. Songs that you thought you could never play, you might be surprised that those chords are chords that you now know. These are very popular chords. You learn these first because they're the easiest and there's a lot of songs you can learn with them. And I encourage you to learn as many songs as you can. Go out there, have a go, get the YouTube video up, have a listen to it, see if you can play along with it, make sure your guitar's in tune. And it's not as hard as you think. It's just repetition and practice, as with everything. Okay, so without further ado, let's move on. I will now come in close so you can see what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, to start this off, we're going to start off for this example, we're going to be using the D chord. So just as a reminder, I'll show you the D chord. And now we'll go over to the picking hand. So what we're going to do is I want you to imagine that your thumb now belongs to the naming note of whatever particular chord you're playing. In this case, it's D. So the thumb will now belong to the D string. And the following fingers will be assigned to the three strings underneath. Now these three strings are the ones that are going to be alternately picked repeatedly with every chord. So you'll strike your bass note first then your third string. So did you catch that? Bass note, third string, second string, first string, second string, third string. So it's basically going up and down. But we use all the fingers, and this is to encourage speed and an even time. Gives it that sound, that distinct sound, that you can tell that every string has been individually picked. Now if I was to change to another chord, let's say an A chord. The naming note for the A chord was the fifth string, so we'd pick the fifth string, and then play the bottom three strings in the same method as we did with the D chord, but we're now missing the fourth string. The reason we do this is to keep the time even, okay? And then we change to an E chord, we'd be playing the top string first. A G chord would also be the top string. And so forth, and now, the picking is the same, but there's a few tips I'd like to give you. When picking, ideally, you always want to anchor your fingers on the guitar somewhere. Keep them on the guitar to keep your hands stable. There's many reasons for this. It might feel uncomfortable at the start, but it'll become comfortable over time. And you'll see why it's important over time, because you won't forget where your hand is placed. Believe it or not, having your hand sit sitting there keeps your pick aware of where it is. So this is how you do it with the pick. And you'll notice that I picked in a different direction each time. So this is gonna act as an exercise for you as well, to learn to pick in a different direction each time. This is extremely difficult for beginners, but over time, it's a much faster method of playing. Alternate picking is quite popular. A lot of great guitarists use it, and um, it's, I don't know if I could play without it, to be honest, it makes quite a difference. So, starting off, again, we're on a D chord. D is the naming note, so we hit that first, and then follow the three down, but we're doing it a different direction each time and we'll end up on a downward stroke again. Okay, so if you don't end up on a down stroke again, you've know you've done a double somewhere or you've done something wrong, so keep practicing. So for a G chord, we'd be doing the top string first, then the third string. Now there's a big jump there, so there you go, I just did a double then. So I'll start again. But I keep my fingers anchored on the guitar. This way I don't have to, eventually you'll get to a stage where you don't have to look at this hand anymore, okay? Um, so yeah, practice all your chords, go through it. There's a song you can look up named Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. which starts off with a D and a G. Does two cycles of this drumming. So you might recognize that song. Something you can look up. Uh, there are a few more difficult chords later on in the song, but um, if you want something to practice and make it a bit more interesting, you can use that song. So um, that's alternate picking. Hopefully that's given you a few things to practice on your 
right hand, your picking and strumming hand, and um, again, every single chord. Try it with all the chords you know so far. So all eight chords, alternately pick between all of them, and I recommend counting to six to keep your mind knowing where to change. So for cha if I wanted to change from D to A, I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, change. Change. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where you change. At the sixth note you change, or if you're going to do two of them, you would change at the twelfth note, and so forth. But practice it like that, and good luck with it.